Welcome to Wisdom for Nonprofits, bringing the best business wisdom to the nonprofit world. Proven leaders share their experience, insights, and best practices. Finally, a podcast for the busy nonprofit professional. And now, your trusted advisor, Bettina Meyer Flug. Do you have a new project in your nonprofit that you want to implement but don't have the right resources to make it happen? Maybe we found a solution for you. On this episode, we are going to share a great new resource for nonprofit leaders, a platform where you can find more than 275 nonprofit consultants. Yes, you heard right, 275 consultants, lawyers, accountants, and other experts that can easily be the right person to help you with your next nonprofit project. If you're like the most nonprofits I know, short on staff, with full of ideas, maybe what we're going to share with you today can help you a lot. Wichi Coaching and Training recently joined Nonprofit Release platform with the intention to help as many nonprofits as possible with our knowledge. And today, we're going to interview the founder of this platform, Heather Yondon. So Heather has more than 18 years of experience in the nonprofit world. She gets joy out of helping groups move forward from chaos to clarity. I think that's why I relate with her. Phrases like adaptive leadership and change management are sure to get her mind churning. Before Heather joined the third space in 2010, she was the Director of Development and Communication with the NC Conservation Network, a statewide network of over 100 organizations focused on protecting North Carolina's environment and public health. With a personal motto of just do it, Heather identifies problems and dreams up actionable solutions. This talent has led her to many projects, including creating nonprofit journalists, an online resource that helps pair nonprofits with the right consultants. Other projects she was involved as a co founder is the Beehive Collective, a railroad based giving circle, and the Third Space Studios, an individual fundraising benchmark report. Inspired by issues that touch her heart, she decided to invest her career in the nonprofit sector. And we can only thank her for that. I'm sure after listening to our conversation today, you will be curious to check out this platform. We all know that time is the most valuable thing that we have. So I thank her so much to being here with us. Thank you, Heather. Do you have a project in your nonprofit that you want to implement but don't have the right resource to make it happen? Maybe you found a new solution. Here today, we're gonna to be talking about, okay, let me go back. My daughter just <laughs> said goodbye to me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a new project in your nonprofit that you want to implement, don't, but don't have the right resources to make it happen? maybe we found a solution for you. On this episode, we're going to share a great new resource for nonprofit leaders, a platform where you can find more than 275 nonprofit consultants. Yes, you heard it right, 275 lawyers, accountants, and other experts that can easily be the right person to help you with your next nonprofit project. If you're like most of the nonprofits I know, short on staff and full of ideas, maybe what we're going to share with you today can help you a lot. Wichi Coaching and Training recently joined Nonprofit List platform with intention to help as many nonprofits as possible with our knowledge. And today we're going to be interviewing the founder of Nonprofit List, Heather Yando. Heather, how do I pronounce your name? Yando, you got it right. Okay. Heather Yandon has over 18 years of experience in the nonprofit world. She gets joy out of helping groups move forward from chaos to clarity. I think that's how we relate. 
Phrases like adaptive leadership and change management are sure to get her mind crutch. Churning. That's Churning. Like, okay. Phrases like adaptive leadership and change management are sure to get her mind churning. Before Heather joined the third space in 2010, she was the director of development and communication with NC Conservation Network and statewide network of over 100 organizations focused on protecting North Carolina's environment and public health. With a personal motto of just do it, Heather identifies problems and dreams of actionable solutions. This talent has led her to many projects, including creating nonprofit needs and online resources that help spare nonprofits with the right consultants. Other projects she was involved as a co-founder is Behaven Collective. How do I pronounce that? Beehive Collective. Beehive Collective, a rail-based giving circle, and the third studio, third space studios individual fundraising benchmark report. Inspired by issues that touch her heart, she decided to invest her career in the nonprofit sector. And we only can thank her for that. I'm sure after listening to our conversation today, you'll be curious to check her platform out. We all know that time is the most valuable resource we have. So we thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Heather. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Heather, I'm so curious, what brought you to the nonprofit sector? I have always been involved in my community in different ways. When I was in college, I got really invested in environmental activism. And it was a way to make my very large university a lot smaller. It was my social uh, connection. And I've met some of my best friends through that work. And when I was leaving school, I had kind of two pathways. One was to become a math teacher. I have a degree in mathematics and an interest in teaching. Uh, and the other was to continue to work on environmental causes. And I got really lucky and got a fantastic job with an environmental nonprofit out, out of college. And that kicked it off. That was in 2001. And I have been doing this work ever since. That's so nice. And tell, tell us more about those two projects that you were involved. Beehive Collective and the Third Space Studio. Yes, so Beehive Collective is our giving circle. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina, and we, uh, a group of us had been working together on a lot of different projects and realized that our social circle was really philanthropic. They gave a lot, but they didn't really see themselves as donors or see themselves as having the ability to make a big impact. So we started a giving circle. The idea is we all give a little bit and then we can make big grants. So for us, it was we asked people to give a half a percent of their income. So if you made $40,000 a year, we would ask you to give $200. For most of the folks who were members, that was the biggest gift they had ever made. Um, we were talking then primarily about folks in their 20s and 30s, a lot of whom worked in the nonprofit sector, were teachers, were in the service industry. We pooled that money and gave it away uh, through a competitive grant making process. Uh, the Beehive Collective, after 14 years, closed down just this past year after giving away more than $400,000 to more than 40 nonprofits serving Raleigh. So I'm really proud of that project. Wow, that's amazing. Thanks, thanks. Um, and then the individual donor benchmark project, uh, when I first moved into the consulting world, I was doing a lot of work around fundraising. And one of the questions I got consistently from organizations is, what should my goals be? What should my benchmarks be? What should my monthly donor program look like? And there was no data for small organizations. If you had a budget of $5 million, you could probably find some data to compare yourself to. 
but I was working a lot with small organizations. So I started just with the people I knew and collected some data. How big is your budget? What are your big funding sources? How many individual donors do you have? Pulled that together in a report. And we did that, I think, for five years um, and produced data every year uh, for small nonprofits. Wow. So you're very big into nonprofit world. And how about this idea of creating this platform where we can share nonprofit professionals? Where does this idea come from? So the germ of this idea came from uh, a group of consultants in North Carolina who would get together once a month. Uh, we would share information, uh, share clients back and forth, make referrals, and we had an email list. And part of that was a really terrible Google spreadsheet that had everyone's name and their contact information and a little bit about the work that they did. So over time, we had 100 people on this spreadsheet, and it just became really unwieldy. So I started thinking about there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a way that I can create this database that's super useful. And that really sparked Nonprofitist. Uh, started looking at if I could create this database, shouldn't I let nonprofit leaders have access to it? And if I did that, Shouldn't it be national instead of just in North Carolina? And when I looked around, there was nobody else who was doing this kind of uh, national, multi-issue, multi-specialty uh, database. So I was really um, excited to launch that in early 2019. That's awesome. And every project they come to bring a solution to a pain what pain do you think the nonprofits were having that your project can cover so my experience had been that nonprofit leaders often knew maybe a consultant maybe one or two but when they needed somebody to help they just didn't have the right folks to call and so I was that person, I was that consultant that a lot of organizations knew. And so they would call me and say, who do you know that does fill in the blank, all kinds of things. So the pain point was really just not having any idea how many folks were out there, how many people could help them, what their real specialties were. So that's what we're trying to solve. That's awesome. So maybe your nonprofit have a strategic plan that has expired. Maybe your board members feel a little bit stuck and want more ideas. Maybe they need to find a new executive director and meanwhile they need a consultant to help out structure the different areas of the nonprofit. Refresh your fundraising strategy. It doesn't matter. You can find the right professional at your platform. But before we start looking for the consultant, what are, are the things that the nonprofits need to prepare to be able to hire a consultant in your point of view? So I think there are really five big questions that organizations need to answer before they reach out to a consultant. The first is getting really clear on what's the challenge that you want to tackle. Or as you said a minute ago, what's the pain point? What's, what's the issue you're having? Mm -hmm. Even if it's strategic planning, maybe it's not just that your strategic plan has expired, but what are the real challenges you're dealing with now? Why do you need a new strategic plan? Oftentimes what we see is that organizations uh, have identified a solution before they even have clarity on the challenge they're trying to address. So number one question, what's the challenge? Second thing is, does everyone in the organization or everyone who's going to be involved really agree that there's a challenge? And do they agree that you need outside help, that you need a consultant for that? So That's if you <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so I have been in the situation where an executive director thinks that the board needs help and the board members do not agree. In that situation, you're not setting up your consultant for success or the project for success. So is everybody clear that this is a challenge and that you need help? 
Then we really want to think about some of the logistics that are going to influence your consultant. So, of course, how much money do you have to address the challenge? Um, a lot of times organizations think that if they are really open in terms of how much they have, it's going to get better responses from consultants. If they don't have a budget or they don't want to share the budget, in truth, we always, I always encourage people to pick not just on budget, but really on fit. And I and many of my colleagues who are consultants, our projects are a range and it really depends on the activity. So if you come and say uh, that you have $10,000, well, we will do a different size project than if you say you have $50,000. I'm not gonna change necessarily my rate per hour. I'm gonna change what we do. So having a budget, Having a timeline, when do you want to do the project? A lot of times uh, for consultants who are really busy, that timeline is going to be the thing that says whether they can do the project or not. If you want a board retreat in two weeks, I'm not the right person. If you want a board retreat three months from now, we might be able to talk. Yeah, when you talk about time on projects, it's also uh, important to consider the milestones. For example, if you have a big fundraising event, it's important for you to let your consultant know about it because this can impact a, a project. For example, if you change your CRM in the middle of fundraising pro uh, event, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. And that really gets to the last thing I, I think you should consider, which is how much bandwidth do you and your organization really have to take this on? How much time and energy can you devote to this? So if you are also going through a CRM change or an equity process or significant staff transition, or you're running a capital campaign, you may not have time to invest in this. Um, if your board is already super busy with committee work and ad hoc efforts, they may not have the bandwidth to take on a significant project. So really thinking about the organizational time and energy. I totally agree with you. I can talk about ex my experience with that. When implementing a CRM, for example, we always think, for example, we can do this in four or six months, but we have to consider the time that the nonprofit professionals will have to dedicate to the project as well. Sometimes they take more than one week to, to bring the database, bring the, the donor information. So knowing what is your available time to dedicate to the project is huge when talking to a consultant. You have to talk about your constraints too. Be honest. I think honesty is super important. Honesty is super important. And recognizing that consultants aren't miracle workers with magic wands. We are not going to come in and fix everything without you having to do anything. So even in the case of uh, implementing a new technology, right, we still need the nonprofit staff to put in significant time and energy. And that's true across every project that I've seen is that the, the staff and the board need to have some dedicated time to make the project happen. We're not going to do it all. Yeah, I know. I know we cannot do magic, but I think consultants can make a big difference in the success of any project implementing because we bring an outside perspective. Mm -hmm. We have experience with other nonprofits. We can share best practice. But to be sure we have a great partnerships, do you have any tips on that? Absolutely. So I think you already mentioned one, which is just being super honest, um, being clear with your consultant about, as we already said, the challenge. But then what else is going on in the organization? So I've gotten into organizations only to find out that uh, the last executive director was fired because of embezzlement. Well, that might actually significantly impact the work we're going to do together. And that probably would have been good for me to know earlier in the process. So taking your consultant in as a confidant, um, in my work, we often talk about being uh, uh, co-conspirators for each other's success. So how can you really have that honest relationship with your consultant. 
being clear that uh, understanding that working with a consultant isn't a quick fix. This goes along with we're not magic and we're not going to do all the work for you. Um, and then finally, along with making sure that you have the bandwidth is setting up deadlines and timelines that you can stick to. Uh, as consultants, particularly, I'm a, I work in a two-person shop. A lot of the folks that I know are small consulting firms. If we think a project is going to end on September 1st, and you get really behind and it doesn't, it goes into September, October, November, you're going to get less from us because we are probably already have other work scheduled for them. We don't have the ability to shift around our schedules as much. So really getting clear about deadlines and making sure you can stick to them. Yeah, something else that I think is super important, I don't know about your experience, but what I figure out that consultants, they don't have the knowledge about the historical data of the organization yes. because they've not been there. So including some time for integration in all the departments, the fundraising, the volunteer management, your operation department is essential for the consultant to have this 360 view before starting the project. It's very important for them to understand the different perspectives. We are bringing an outside perspective, but we need to understand your own perspectives uh, to be able to start a project. So if you can consider some time for integration, this is super relevant. Don't you yeah, think? Absolutely. Um, it's kind of like onboarding. You know, I when I come into an organization, I've already looked around on your website, but I want to get a sense of your last strategic plan. I might want to look at a grant report. Maybe I want to look at your budget from the last couple of years. I might want to have a conversation with your board chair or your program director. I want to orient myself so I've got a better sense that allows me to ask better questions, to give better advice, to just be a better partner for you. For sure. And whenever you find the right partner, it's important to invest in long-term partnerships. That's why, you know, the trust comes and the trust is super important in long-term. And transparency, if, you're, if the consultant is not in, uh, equipped to solve your problem, that's why it's nice to be part of a network. If we're not equipped, we have a source to forward to another consultant that can help you out. Absolutely. We were talking early a little bit about RFPs and um, my experience with RFPs. I used to work for the government in Brazil, and it's super hard whenever you engage with an organization and then just for uh, bureaucracy, you have to renew your agreement throughout an RFP. So what is your experience with RFPs and what can we do to avoid the need of creating an RFP or what are the pros and cons in your point of view of an RFP? So I am not a fan of RFPs. Um, and for folks who don't know, RFP is requests for proposals. And it's usually something that gets sent out by an organization to lots of different consultants asking for help. Um, I have seen RFPs that are 20 pages long. Uh, I have also seen RFPs that are two pages long. I like the two-page ones much better. Um, but a couple of things, a couple of challenges. Oftentimes, I see RFPs that are really, really prescriptive. So they are not necessarily clear about the challenge, but they've mapped out their solution. So they want to do three one-hour meetings, a focus group of this size, a community survey, whatever it is. That's really challenging as a consultant because you, you're not letting us bring our expertise to the to the table to help you both diagnose the situation and to think about what's the best intervention and what's the best process for addressing that challenge. So they're often too prescriptive. They often require a lot of free work. So if I'm putting together a you know seven page response to your request for proposals. I might have to pull budget information. I certainly have to write a lot and think a lot about how I would address your challenge. For organizations that are large enough that have whole teams who just respond to proposals, 
that's a, a cost of doing business for small shops for new consultants <clears throat> we don't have the capacity to be doing that a lot so we have to make hard choices about if we'll even apply and then finally they're really impersonal um, sometimes an rfp says don't get in touch with us with questions well as a consultant who wants to have a strong relationship and partnership with you that's really challenging at the beginning that i can't even get in touch with you that i ha don't have a way uh, to really get some of my important questions answered and you might not find a good fit, you know, personality is super important if you like the person or not, if you're going to get well. So it's important, the, this initial contact, I think, uh, if we can avoid RFPs, that's my recommendation as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that there's a couple of things you can think about if you're if you are in an organization that relies on RFPs. So the first is, can you just try to streamline your RFP, really get clear about what you need um, from consultants and the information you can give them. Can you open it up a little bit so that you can make sure to have at least email answers to questions, even if you're not able to get on the phone with folks? Can you make sure in your RFP that you're really clear about the challenge and you're really clear about the resources you have? If there's no budget in an RFP, I'm definitely not responding to it because I have no idea what kind of resources you've got. So making sure you've got that. And then the other idea, I, I've seen this a couple of times and really enjoyed it is um, instead of an RFP, a request for conversation. So awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I'll tell you, um, I just went through this process maybe two months ago, got a request for conversation. It read much like an RFP, but a very well-written one. And at the bottom, it says, if you're interested, click here to schedule a 25-minute meeting with me. So I did that, had a wonderful 25-minute meeting with the person, didn't have to really prepare at all. Um, they said, okay, if we move on, you'll have another meeting with myself and the executive director. Well, it turns out we didn't move on, but that was fine because I had spent 25 minutes of a delightful conversation and that was all the time that I had expended on that. And I would do that all day long. So I think they got much better response, a much more diverse, interesting set of consultants responding to that request for conversation. That's an awesome idea. I loved it. So if the listeners from our podcast are nonprofit professionals, how they can effectively use your platform? What are the step-by-step -step for them to get the best out of the platform? Hmm. So you would go to nonprofit.ist, nonprofitist. We think of the folks who work in nonprofits like a dentist or a florist. We're, I'm a nonprofitist. So go to nonprofit.ist. Um, and there you can search for consultants in a number of ways. So you'll see some folks on our homepage, our newest consultants, and then you'll see options to search. And you can search by issue area or by geography, by keyword. So once you've got a project in mind or a challenge in mind, go there, search around. As you get deeper into the site, you'll have to create a free membership. Super easy, you can use Google or Facebook to sign in. Um, that allows you to save your favorites, to come back and contact folks. And then once you've found one or more folks you might wanna work with, reach out to them. Uh, you can reach out through the website. There's a contact button. Most of our consultants also have a website, a phone number, an email address listed, so you can contact them directly that way. Uh, and we encourage you to start the conversation with some of those basics. What's the challenge? What are the resources available? What's the timeline? Just to get the conversation going. Yeah, prepare a request for conversation. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
So in the other hand, if we have consultants listen to us that wants to be part of this network, what do you offer for consultants and how they can join this party, as I can say? <laughs> <laughs> so for consultants, we have three things. So we've already talked a little bit about the directory. You can post your profile and nonprofit leaders can find you. But we have a really strong community. So we offer monthly professional development courses just for nonprofit consultants. And then we have uh, some regular habits around connecting a monthly call. We have a Slack and a LinkedIn uh, group. And then we do some one off programs throughout the year to connect folks to make those referrals and to really lean on each other for support. Well, thank you. And tell us more a little bit about your consultant. What is your secret sauce? What how can you help nonprofits as a consultant? Because besides everything that you do to help other consultants, you offer your consultants for as well for nonprofits. Yes. So I consult mostly with smaller nonprofits, keeping on that theme. Uh, a lot around strategy and meeting design and facilitation. So sometimes that looks like strategic planning. Sometimes it looks like facilitating retreats or trainings. Um, sometimes that looks like we just need to have a conversation and we're not sure how to do it. And so I come in and help structure that conversation. Wow. And uh, what was your favorite nonprofit that you work with? Oh, that's like picking a favorite kid. I'm not sure I can do that. Um, yeah, so the, the nonprofit that I worked with for nine years is the North Carolina Conservation Network. So I will say that they are my favorite nonprofit. Why is that? I really appreciate the work that they do. They're a statewide advocacy network. Um, they work with all of the environmental groups in North Carolina. Um, and they have been really thoughtful in experimenting with new ways of getting people engaged in advocacy. Wow, that's so nice. I'm going to tell you about my favorite uh, yes. relationship with nonprofits. I started, I think, 20 years ago, volunteer for shelters who rescue dogs in Brazil. And I was really in love with one organization called International Alliance of Animals. And it was super nice working with this executive director. She was actually American and moved to Brazil and was really commoted about the situation with the animals there. She was the first one who brought the mobile service, like a big bus where she do nurturing in poor communities. Um, she was the one that approved the law to ban animals from circles. So she did an amazing work. When I started working with her, she was healthy and doing well. But after a few years, uh, she became sick. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the volunteers, we were really struggling to think about the, the future of the organization. And my work there was really to help her structure the organization so she could find someone to take over the organization. It took us like three years to rebuild her website, her volunteer database, and how she operates is everything. And ha happily, after those three years, we found an amazing person to take over the organization is a very young guy who is very involved in politics and had the energy and the money to take over. Mm -hmm. She had more than, I think, 600 animals at her property, it was a huge property, horses, dogs, and I think 300 cats. And I felt so relieved that this three years of work, the past three years, really uh, meant a lot to find this uh, person to take over. So this was my favorite project so far, but I'm looking forward to work with other nonprofits. That's why I joined your network and I hope to find out there other nonprofits that need this international experience, you know. Congratulations, that is amazing. 
Yeah, and I heard that you have a good um, package that you can share with nonprofits, how to get started with your consultant. Can you tell us more about this package and how they can access this material? Yes, so we have what we're calling the Consultant Start Pack. So it is a set of tools for working with consultants. Um, there are four pieces of it. Um, the five questions you should answer before you call a consultant, thinking about an alternative to RFPs, a checklist for reaching out to consultants, and some more information about how you can use Nonprofitist. Uh, you can go to nonprofit.ist slash start pack to get that. So that's your consultant start pack. Um, and the link will also be in the show notes of this recording. Yes, perfect. So if you are nonprofit professionals, please join the platform and for free, you can have access to all those consultants. If you are a consultant for nonprofits, join our team and check us out. If you have some time, go to my profile at Professionalist and take a look on how can I help you. Mm -hmm. From your point of view, Heather, uh, since you work with a lot of consultants, what do you think I can add value to nonprofits? I think there are really two things. One is your international experience, in particular working with nonprofits and government agencies internationally. And then also that you bring the combination of uh, kind of emotional intelligence, culture shift, and technology. So you've got the Salesforce background, but you also get people. And so that combination is really useful. Yes. When I arrived here in the United States, my big, biggest challenge was to find a, a coach who can help me get into this nonprofit world because this is what I'm impatient about it. And I wanted to help nonprofits um, thrive on their marketing and this connection with volunteers and donors. But I noticed that there is a lack of organization behind because nonprofit professionals, they have to wear different hats mm -hmm. and they don't have time to know everything about all the areas. So a CRM makes a huge difference. That's why I started digging into the Salesforce world. The Salesforce offer a free, free platform for nonprofits, and it's amazing how different can an organization be when they organize themselves in the back stage. Mm -hmm. I, I really like to help people get organized, but mainly what I was talking about at the beginning of the show, behind all the work that we do, we are human beings. And... It's hard to face problems during our work time and come home and not being touched by those problems. So how to release that, how to find work-life balance, how to put boundaries on your work, this is essential too. Don't you agree? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we've been, my consulting partner and I have been thinking and writing more about this because it just seems to be coming up everywhere now and in all of our client interactions the kind of burnout and how we need to change our systems of work um, has been a hot topic lately yeah my hot topic with nonprofits is being relational intelligence i've been using a tool to research about the native talents of every professional and how to build an efficient team analyzing the talents you have inside the house and giving the right job for the right person. Mm. Since we wear different hats, we need to identify the strengths of our team. So that's what I've been working with lately with nonprofit professionals. So Heather, I really admire what you're doing. Thank you so much for helping this uh, segment that I'm a patient about it to help all the consultants for us. Like you said, we are little shops. We want to help. And sometimes we don't have the resources. <laughs> so your platform is huge. It's going to make a huge difference in our lives, in several nonprofits. Thank you so much for everything you do for, for this segment. Oh, thank you so much. I really enjoyed chatting with you today. Thank you. And listen to all other other podcasts, Wisdom for Nonprofits. Thank you. Okay, we did it. <laughs> Is that okay? 
Yes. Good. Thank Good. You so good. Much. That was fun. Thank you. <laughs> so this can be a marketing tool for you. It's more a subliminal thing. Once it's ready, it's going to be available at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and you can use this uh, to send to, to consultants, nonprofits, any, any people that you want. And I'm yes. going to send you the database too, together with the description that you send it to me. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. And yes, yeah, send me when the podcast is live, send it to me and we'll get it out to you. Okay. Thank you so much. So you can hang up and I will practice on my introduction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. For listening to Wisdom for Nonprofits. To hear past and future episodes, please subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast channel. We appreciate your reviews and suggestions for future show topics. If you have a question or a suggestion, please write to us at podcast at wity.tech. More resources are available for you at our website, wity.tech. And please join us in the Wisdom for Nonprofits group on LinkedIn. Wisdom for Nonprofits is copyright 2019 by Bettina Meyer Flug and WITY.tech. All rights reserved.